Gordon Taylor will step down as chief executive of the Professional Footballers Association. Taylor has been in his position for 38 years but has come under increasing scrutiny in recent years, particularly over his salary. PFA accounts show that the 74-year-old earned pound 2.29 million last year, a figure that makes him the highest paid trade union official in the country. Taylor announced on Wednesday, the end of 2018 was an extremely difficult period for the hard-working, excellent staff of the PFA. Many of the attacks leveled at our organization and its leadership through the media were both unfounded and unfair. It is true that, at times last year, members of the management committee did not see eye to eye on a number of issues but, following a series of meetings over the last few months, we are now united on the best way forward for the organization. Today, members of the PFA have agreed that I should remain as chief executive throughout the period of the review to provide the necessary stability for our organization and members. Following the review and the appointment of a new CEO, the current chairman and management committee have agreed it is right for them to step down as well. I have given the majority of my life to the advancement of the PFA and I hope I have provided a platform for our continued success in the future. Every decision I have made has been in the interest of members and I believe the review will make the PFA the oldest and most powerful sporting union in the world, even stronger. It will ensure we have the right structures in place to support our former, current and future members. It goes without saying that I am extremely proud of the work and input that the PFA has had on the development of the greatest game in the world, and I will continue to fight for the organization, its members and our role in the game both in this country and worldwide. Taylor announced in November that the organization would undergo an independent review, following criticism led by PFA chairman Ben Perkis. Perkis received support from more than 300 current and former players, amid suggestions that Taylor's salary is out of step with funding for causes, such as the £100,000 for research into dementia among ex-players. Perkis challenge and the ongoing internal power struggle forced the PFA's annual general meeting in November to be delayed until Wednesday afternoon, in Manchester. But Perkis said, last year I stated that the PFA needs to evolve otherwise there is a risk we get left behind. As chairman of the PFA, I said publicly that we needed to review the governance of the organization, and I welcome the fact that an independent review will now take place. While I am an advocate for change. It was never my intention to be critical of the organization. There is so much about the PFA of which we can rightly be proud, and I want to acknowledge the staff at the PFA who work tirelessly to support members across so many different areas. To ensure a smooth transition to new leadership at the conclusion of the review, it is important that the current management committee remains in place. This continuity of leadership will enable us to oversee the consideration and implementation of any recommendations sport resolutions make, and provide the stability needed to continue delivering for our members. I am grateful for all the support we've received as an organization. Taylor has headed up the Players' Union since 1981, having initially taken over from former Secretary Cliff Lloyd. He is credited with negotiating the PFA's biggest source of income the pound 25 million per year the organization receives from the Premier League. Last month Taylor said he had recommended to the management committee that sports resolutions conduct the review. The public dispute between Taylor and Perkis could also see the latter depart too, as well as breaking up the entire management committee which is made up of 13 current players, including Burnley goalkeeper Tom Heaton and England women's skipper Steph Houghton. More to follow.